Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. My name is Wendy Beckman, and I am a registered dietitian with the New York State Office for the Aging and SNAP-Ed New York. I have with me today Molly Capito, who is a registered dietitian with Montgomery County and <clears throat> the SNAP-Ed New York. And we also have Jordan Nintz with us, who is a dietetic intern. So she has graduated, graduated from Russell Sage College in Troy, New York, with her bachelor's degree in nutrition. And she's currently working as a dietetic intern. Now, if you don't know what that means is anyone who wants to be a registered dietitian must complete an internship after their bachelor's degree is completed. And the one that I went to was about a thousand hours. It took almost a year uh, to complete. And they're all a little bit different, but they're, they're you know, all fulfill certain uh, qualifications that need to be finished. Um, and then the individual will take their test to become a registered dietitian. It is a national exam and you have to pass it or you can't be call yourself a registered dietitian. So that's my little plug for registered dietitians today. If you, if someone you know or someone that you go to see for advice regarding nutrition calls themselves a nutritionist, they aren't necessarily a registered dietitian. So they haven't met all of those criteria. They don't necessarily have a degree in nutrition, a bachelor's degree in nutrition, and they haven't necessarily passed the test to become a registered dietitian. So it's not you know, absolutely necessary, but registered dietitians are experts in helping people who have medical conditions and therefore need some sort of help with their diet because of their medical condition, whether it's because they had a heart attack or they um, you know, have high blood pressure or they have diabetes or they have kidney disease, something like that where their diet has to be changed because of their medical condition. So anybody in New York state can call themselves a nutritionist. They don't have to have a degree in nutrition, but not everybody in New York state can call themselves a registered dietitian. So that is good information to know as at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, so we're going to start out by uh, having Molly talk a little bit about her program and what she's been doing in Montgomery, Herkimer and Fulton County. So go ahead, Molly. Sure. So um, hi, everybody. Um, so I work out of the Montgomery County Office for Aging. I run SNAP-Ed New York for Fulton, Herkimer and Montgomery counties. Um, so kind of more so recently, um, we've been um, running the Farm to OFA program. Um, it's kind of one of the uh, goals of SNAP Ed New York is to increase access to fruits and vegetables for folks who are maybe, um, you know, who are 60 or older, who have more of an, a limited income to help them to better, you know, access fruits and veggies. So um, I've been busy, um, you know, working with a farmer and um, partnering with them locally to um, allow for folks in our area to purchase produce um, at a lower cost, um, be able to pick it up right at our office um, and they can use you know, cash or actually the farmer's market nutrition program coupons um, to accept or to um, rather purchase the produce. Um, and thanks to SNAP in New York, we've been able to provide along with the produce that they can pick and choose um, what they'd like in their order. They can also get recipes right along with the produce. Um, and it's been working out real well. Um, you know, a lot of folks have been taking advantage of the program. They really enjoy, you know, being able to come to our office because they come to our office anyways for different services. Um, you know, they've been able to get fresh produce, you know, locally um, and use their farmer's market nutrition programs coupons to be able to, you know, get their fresh produce. Um, and we are running that. We have start. We started that this year. It's a new program. Um, it's a pilot program. We're seeing how it goes this year. We might expand it for next year, um, but it's been running from August and it'll run through the end of October. Um, so we have another. We have our next produce pickup um, next Friday. So we've been taking orders, and we Jordan, my intern, um, who's with us on the call today, has been helping me call folks to place orders. Um, in advance for folks, and then they'll be picking up their produce next Friday at our office. Um, we do have a couple people we're able to deliver to because we have some volunteers to assist with getting um, produce out to those folks. Um, so yeah, we have a pretty busy um, time right now with the produce program, and it's been pretty successful so far, I would say. Um, we have some, yeah. some workshops too scheduled. Um, Good. 
that is, you know, all about also providing workshops and education in the community. So I, I do have some scheduled for November, um, kind of looking forward into the months to come, um, have some scheduled then. All right, great. Yeah. So Mally, you've been doing in the past, pr prior to the pandemic, we did um, a lot of workshops in person mm -hmm. at congregate meal sites and at senior centers. And then over the pandemic, we started offering uh, some of those workshops virtually using Zoom or other, um, you know, online platforms. Uh, so we will have uh, Molly's contact information at the end of this program. So uh, if you're interested in um, either an in-person or a virtual workshop, you can contact Molly. Um, and I will, I'm, I'm going to ask Jordan to talk a little bit about um, your internship. And uh, I know with my internship, I did different programs. I did some clinical work. I did some, um, uh, you know, public health. I, you know, so uh, tell me a little bit about your internship, Jordan. So I actually just started. Um, my first rotation has been with Molly. So I've been helping her out with her produce program, which she was just talking about. And um, it's been a lot of fun so far. I really like it. Next, I'm going into school food service. So I'll be working at a high school. Um, then, yeah, I have to do like clinical, long-term care. Um, I'll be working in a nursing home, that kind of stuff. Right, right. Yep, that's, that's wonderful. And you, gotta, you get a lot of experience. So, um, you know, as a dietetic intern, if, if you do clinical rotations, off, oftentimes it's in a hospital. Um, and you'll actually go and uh, talk to patients and write notes and read, you know, medical notes that the doctors have written and things like that. So it's, it's really good practice. And um, I know it was a little bit uh, intimidating for me the, when I first did it, but uh, we wish you luck um, and continued success. I'm sure you will do really well with that. Um, so one of the things we're going to talk about a little bit today is we're going to be talking about sugar sweetened beverages and reducing sugar sweetened beverages and the importance of hydration for older adults. So um, I think that reducing sugar sweetened beverages is one of those things that's really good for anybody of all, you know, any age, uh, only because those sugar sweetened beverages can sort of add empty calories to your intake that you don't really need. Um, and they often sort of, you know, you're ingesting those calories and then it doesn't make you feel full. It doesn't fill you up. So you just, uh, you know, it can just add extra calories that you don't need. So um, that's one thing we're going to look at. But to me, the more important part is hydration for older adults. One of the things that happens as we age is we lose our sense of thirst. So we will often not feel as thirsty uh, as we age, it's just a, a normal part of the aging process. And so then um, a lot of times the recommendation is to drink six to eight glasses of water a day. And that can really become a challenge for people as they get older. And if anyone themselves, or maybe they're a caregiver for someone uh, who their parents or something who is older than them, and they may find that, you know, they really have to keep reminding that person that they're taking care of to drink, 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 drink more. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about some strategies for increasing um, hydration and the appropriate things to hydrate with. What are those things that we want to concentrate on? Um, and Molly actually has a presentation that she's going to give. That'll take a few minutes. Um, that's going to go over some of those things. Just to, uh, to keep in mind, uh, if you have a question, for us, you can type it into the chat box and uh, we will take some time uh, either in between the uh, presentation or at the end to answer some of those questions. And, and we'd really love to hear from you. So uh, feel free to do that. Type any questions you have into the chat box. But Molly, if you do you have your presentation ready? Do you think you have do, it? Up? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I'll go ahead. If I have access to share my screen, I'll, I'll go ahead and All right. share our point here. Um, so bear with me here. Sure. I gotta get, I got my water with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Let's see. 
All right, great. One more button to click here, hopefully it works. Yep. Can you see my- Yes, yes, I can see that. Um, I'm almost thinking it's not the right screen. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't think it is. Okay. Bear with me. Technology here is sometimes. Yep. <laughs> um, it happens. I'm just going to, let's see here, stop my share and re try this here. Um, we'll also have some information at the end. Um, we can, uh, I can give out my email address, anything uh, that any questions that people have that they might think of later, they certainly can uh, send me an email if you would like to. Um, so, uh, you know, there are our, our programs for SNAPAD are going on throughout New York State, um, and they are in different areas. So um, usually the best thing to do is to uh, get a hold of me and then I can refer you to someone uh, if you have someone in your, in your area that that does the snap ad um, that's cer certainly something that I can uh, hook you up with or it, in New York City they're doing a lot of uh, remote education so you can really join those workshops from absolutely anywhere so even if you're in the Adirondack Park and they're running some classes in New York State or in uh, sorry in the city in the New York City area um, that are remote, you can join those classes as well. So uh, from the, the comfort of your own home, you don't have to drive, you don't have to worry about the weather. So that's one of really the advantages of uh, the uh, doing the remote workshops and doing them sort of like on this platform via Zoom or via Facebook Live. So yeah, Molly, I'm not Do sure. I, can you see my um, PowerPoint now? Yeah, I can see it. Yep. It's got all of them sort of on the bottom, but that's okay. We can, we can see it. Um, okay. This, this is okay. Or Let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, sorry about the technology errors or whatever here. Um, anyway, so this is a PowerPoint um, presentation that usually I would present at present with um, for a virtual workshop um, because we do offer, you know, workshops via Zoom. Um, so this one will be about, um, you know, reducing our sugar sweetened beverage consumption and we'll talk about hydration as well. Um, Wendy did certainly point out some good, um, you know, um, points about, you know, as we age, you know, our sense of thirst does dwindle or we may, um, you know, not, not really ever feel thirsty. So that can't really be um, a good indicator to go off of as far as to assess whether you are hydrated or not. Um, so just a little bit about SNAP-Ed, you know, SNAP-Ed and, you know, taking advantage of our workshops can help you to save time, save money and eat healthy. Um, we do provide these across New York State. Um, I provide workshops and SNAP-Ed New York um, services for Fulton, Herkimer, Montgomery counties. Um, so, so, you know, some of us educators with SNAP Ed, you know, actually target in on and focus in on educating folks six and older, um, such as myself. Um, so what we'll go over in this little um, presentation here that I'm presenting on today, you know, we'll talk about carbohydrates, we will talk about natural versus added sugars, we will also talk about, you know, different sources of added sugar. Um, Wendy had said and noted, you know, how, you know, a lot of our beverages um, may have added sugar. Um, so by, you know, being aware of the beverages that have added sugar and maybe reducing our intake of those and finding healthier alternatives for hydration, you know, that can be a good way to decrease our added sugar intake and decrease those, you know, empty, unnecessary added calories that contribute there. Um, so we'll talk about sugar sweetened beverages, you know, other ways to hydrate besides water, um, and then, you know, about the importance of hydrating with water. All right. So hopefully after this workshop, you know, you will learn how to hydrate, you know, healthfully um, and, and learn what are some good beverages to hydrate with and a little bit more about, you know, carbohydrates as well and, and added sugar. So I'm sure you guys have all heard about, you know, carbohydrates. Um, you know, it's kind of a 
a big branch art overarching term. Um, and a lot of our foods contain carbohydrates. Um, hold on a second here. Um, so, you know, a lot of our plant foods and our dairy products contain carbohydrates. Um, our bodies actually break down carbs into glucose and glucose is one of our main sources for energy in our cells and our tissues and in, in our organs. Um, so it is important to certainly, you know, have carbohydrates in our diets and get them from, from more natural sources like plant foods and dairy products. Um, so sugar is actually, you know, one of the many carbohydrates. Um, it's a simple carbohydrate and it's easily broken down for energy. Um, so, you know, when we consume foods that have sugar, you know, we can break them down pretty quickly. You know, they will increase our blood sugar, you know, quicker than complex carbohydrates. Um, they're e more easily and more quickly broken down. Um, so it is important to consume a variety of nutritious carbohydrate foods, as many of them can actually supply us with things like dietary fiber, vitamins, minerals, and calories. So it's important to, you know, choose those more nutritious sources of carbs. Um, so there's natural sugar and then there's added sugar. Um, so, so as far as natural sugar, um, you know, foods and drinks such as milk, yogurt, um, those contain the sugar lactose, and that's a naturally occurring sugar in our foods and in our beverages that are, you know, dairy pro in dairy products. Um, and then um, natural sugar can also be found in our fruits and in our vegetables um, in the form of fructose. Um, so again, you know, these are more healthier choices and um, sources of sugar, natural sugar. Um, you know, natural sugar is found in milk, yogurt, fresh, frozen, dried, canned, um, and 100% juice fruit. 100% um, fruit juice, you know, can provide us with natural sugar. Um, and it's, it's, it's better to try to have more whole fruit than, than juice. Um, that's kind of a recommendation we also give out during SNAP-Ed. Um, so as far as- Molly? Sugars, yep. Molly, I'm just going to throw yes. in there that previously you were talking about simple car carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So uh, simple carbohydrates are something like table sugar, and as you mentioned, they are more easily broken down in the body. Um, complex carbohydrates are foods such as um, a whole a piece of whole wheat bread. That's a carbohydrate, but it's a complex carbohydrate. So there's more fiber usually in those foods, and they're broken down more slowly in the body. So they tend to have less of a reaction. Uh, they don't make uh, your blood sugar go up quite as high or quick go at, up as quickly, um, the complex carbohydrates, uh, uh, as opposed to the simple carbohydrates. So that's why, um, you know, oftentimes we will recommend um, eating carbohydrate foods that are whole grain, um, like whole wheat or multigrain uh, uh, options because they uh, have less of a, a, an impact on your blood sugar. And mm -hmm. go ahead, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> No, that's okay. Thank you, Wendy, for kind of diving more into the complex carbohydrates, right? Um, and then as far as the simple carbohydrates, you know, there's um, sugar is one of those simple carbohydrates. And then there's the natural versus added sugars. Um, and those are two different kinds of, of uh, you know, more simple carbohydrates. Um, so added sugars um, that have been found that are, um, are sugars that have been added during the processing of foods. Um, so you know, our packets of sugar that we throw into our drinks um, or, you know, that table sugar that we throw into our, our baked goods, those are more added sugars. Um, you know, sugars from syrups and honey are also considered added sugars as well because, you, you know, usually we will throw those into, you know, recipes. Um, so added sugars are used to sweeten, preserve, or improve the functional attributes of, of fruits and, or of foods and beverages. Um, So foods containing natural sugars do come in a, with a variety of nutritional benefits, um, such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So when it comes to sugar, you know, trying to instead incorporate naturally occurring sugars, you know, by, you know, taking in and consuming, you know, dairy products, fruits and vegetables, those will all provide us with, 
things like vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Um, and then when consuming high amounts of fruit, foods and beverages with added sugar, you know, it can make it difficult to meet daily recommended levels and if, if important nutrients while staying within calorie limits, um, because, you know, it's just really providing us with added calories, um, you know, foods and beverages with added sugars. They don't provide us usually with vitamins, you know, minerals and fiber. Yeah. And I had used the term sort of empty calories before, and um, you may have heard that term before, but what I mean by empty calories are there calories that don't provide any nutrition along with the food. So if you think of a regular soda, really what is in that soda is usually artificial colorings or natural colorings, water and sugar, right? There, there are no vitamins or minerals in there. There's no fiber in there. But if you eat an orange, there's naturally occurring sugar in an orange. However, if you eat that orange, you're also going to get fiber, you're going to get vitamin C, you know, there's other things in that food that are beneficial to you that are not in a regular soda. So those are just calories or empty calories, because those calories don't have any added nutritional benefit to them. So that's what I mean by empty calories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So by limiting our intake of, you know, added sugar in our diets, um, we can free up calories for more nutritious foods and beverages um, to help us meet our nutrient needs. Um, so they've actually found that, you know, frequent drinking of sugar sweetened beverages is associated with um, these kinds of conditions, you know, type two diabetes um, may result in tooth decay, kidney, heart disease, non-alcoholic liver disease, and then just maybe weight gain and obesity just because you know, these beverages with added sugar just really contribute unnecessary, you know, added um, calories that can, that can cause weight gain. So added sugars are, you know, found in things like baked goods, desserts, um, you know, they might be hidden in things like salad dressing, sauces, spreads, condiments, and gravies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys all assume that, you know, our candies, our jams, our syrups, our sweet toppings, those all also provide us with added sugar too. Um, and honey, maple syrup, and table sugar, those single ingredient sugars are also considered, you know, added sugars. It's always good to read labels because sometimes uh, some foods that don't taste particularly sweet, and I'm thinking of some things like Italian dressing, they might actually have sugar in them, but you don't realize it because it doesn't taste really, really sweet, like jam tastes sweet. So it is important to check the labels. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Our condiments are definitely one that, you know, yes. got us a lot of added sugar. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, sugar sweetened beverages can contribute a lot of added sugar to our diets. Um, so it is important to choose the right beverage, you know, for our health. You know, a lot of us don't drink enough in general. Um, so it's important to pick and choose those healthier beverage choices. Um, so sugar sweetened beverages are those that are sweetened, like corn sweetener, corn syrup, brown sugar, all of these that are listed here on the screen, um, sucrose, raw sugar. Um, they'll be found in the ingredient list on a beverage label. Um, so you can, you know, check on there next time when you pick up a bev, uh, you know, a a drink of choice and see if there is added sugar in there by looking at that ingredient list. Molly, I have a question in the yes. chat and uh, the person is asking, is there any difference nutritionally between honey and corn syrup? Um, and I, I'll answer that first and then I'll, I'll let Jordan or Molly jump in if they want to. But as far as your body is concerned, calorie wise, there is no difference between honey and corn syrup. So, um, you know, they're probably very similar in calories. Um, I think that, you know, there's some people will say that the honey contains um, sort of pollen from your local area. And I've heard that, you know, if you have honey and it's raw honey and you eat that, it can help with your allergies. I don't really know how true that is. I don't know if they've really done any studies on that. Um, and if there are any vitamins and minerals in honey, they're probably in trace amounts, which means that they're in such small amounts that you'd have to like drink a gallon of honey to get 
enough of the nutrient. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's sort of like, yes, maybe there's a little bit of that kind of stuff in there, but not enough to make it like, oh yes, that's a better choice than say table sugar is. It tastes different. Some people like the way it tastes better, but I don't, I don't think that there's any research that shows that honey is a better source or a better sweetener because it has nutrients in it than corn syrup. And Molly, I'll ask you if you have any. I kind of agree, agree with you too, Wendy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, when honey definitely has like a distinct flavor. So, you know, maybe folks will, if they're going to swap out sugar for honey, maybe they'll put a little less in. So maybe overall they'll, they'll take in less added sugar calories, you know, from honey because you'll be certainly tasting the flavor of the honey in whatever you're using it in. Um, but overall, you know, your body will, you know, break it down similarly and, um, you know, sugar is kind of sugar. So, yeah. <laughs> so now we'll get into, you know, what are some examples of the beverages that are considered sugar sweetened beverages? So regular soda certainly, you know, provides us with a lot of added sugar. Um, Sugar-free soda, diet soda does not um, provide us with added sugar. Um, they do instead just put artificial sweetener in. Our bodies don't break that down like we do, you know, regular sugar. Um, so it will not bring up your blood sugar at all. Um, fruit drinks. So when it comes to fruit juice, you know, you want to look for 100% fruit juice. Um, things like fruit juice cocktail are not 100% juice. And usually on a, a package um, above the nutrition facts label, they will usually put the percentage juice on there. And you want to try to look for 100% juice. Um, because if it's not, they may, you know, be putting in things like corn syrup into that beverage. Um, sports drinks also provide us with added sugar, energy drinks, sweetened waters, coffee and tea beverages, depending on if, you know, you're putting added sugar in or not. Um, and then just to kind of visualize how, how much added sugar is in your beverage of choice, um, you know, we can compare actually, you know, um, the sugar content in the beverage to granulated sugar. Um, so in just a minute here, we'll show you, um, you know, an example of um, how many teaspoons of added sugar are in a typical um, 20 ounce cola can. Um, so how many teaspoons of granulated sugar do you think would be in one 20 ounce can of cola? Um, so again, you can compare um, you know, the amount of grams of sugar in a drink to a teaspoon of sugar. Um, so actually there are 10 teaspoons of added sugar in a 20 ounce cola. Um, so can you imagine, you know, spooning into your mouth, like 10 teaspoons of added sugar, that'd be crazy. But, you know, when you're comparing, um, you know, the sugar content in the soda to teaspoons of added sugar, like table sugar, that's how much sugar is in this beverage. Um, so if you wanted to kind of do the math yourself, um, one teaspoon of granulated sugar is about four grams of sugar. Um, so you'd have to do some math there to, to calculate out some of your beverages. Um, so if you were to take a look at a nutrition facts label, um, the newer one that's come out will actually include um, a section where it says includes added sugar. Um, so if there is any added sugar in a beverage or a food item, um, it'll be listed below total sugars. So that's where it would be. You know, try to look for the least amount of grams of added sugar when you're picking and choosing beverages or, you know, any food. Um, so just as, as an example of, you know, how to figure out how many teaspoons of sugar are in your beverage. Um, if you were to look at a nutrition facts label and if it said like 48 grams of added sugar in that beverage for that serving, um, you would divide that by four because one teaspoon um, has about four grams um, per serving of sugar. So it would be 12 teaspoons of added sugar for that beverage, um, which is really crazy. So it is important to try to hydrate, you know, with water when possible. Um, you know, water is a very important um, nutrient for our health. Um, and it's a vital fluid that's often overlooked in our diets. It doesn't supply us with any energy or calories, but it does play many roles in our body. So it helps to maintain our body's temperature. You know, it helps with proper digestion and intestinal function. 
Um, it can help to carry nutrients throughout our body, even carry away waste as well. Um, it helps with urinary tract health. Um, it helps us to keep cool, you know, during the summertime. With um, it also helps with joint lubrication, especially as we age. That's an important function there. And then it also um, is important for memory and brain function. You know, if you are dehydrated, I don't know if any of you have experienced kind of feeling like your memory is a little foggy, um, but that can happen if you're dehydrated. So as we age, as Wendy had said before, you know, um, our thirst does tend to diminish. Um, so that kind of means that, you know, you may become severely dehydrated before you even feel a sense of thirst. Um, so it is important to try to make hydrating a routine. For those over age 60, you know, dehydration is actually one of the most frequent causes of hospitalization. Um, so it's important to try to choose the right beverage um, because it is important for our health and, you know, try to make water be one of those um, beverages that you, you select. Um, it's a great way to hydrate. But, you know, as Wendy had said before, you know, especially as we age, many people do struggle to um, hydrate and maybe you don't even enjoy the taste of water. Um, so there are just some tips that I figured we could share um, to help you to, to better stay hydrated healthfully. Um, so one suggestion is to try to drink a whole glass of water um, instead of just a sip when you're taking your medications. Um, so, you know, if you take medication two, three times a day, um, you can get in two or three cups of fluid right then and there when you're taking your medications. Um, try drinking a cup of fluid first thing in the morning um, before you eat breakfast, before you even have your coffee or tea as well even. Um, usually we are more dehydrated in the morning because just think about it, we're going a long period of time in the morning, you know, after we've slept all night, not drinking. So it's important to hydrate first thing and then you don't have to worry as much about getting up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom if you're hydrating and making that a priority earlier on. So other, you know, ideas for hydrating, um, you know, other beverages and foods can help to hydrate us as well, not only water. Um, so our fluid and soup and broth can also count as well. Try to look for low sodium options. Um, you can suck on ice chips, um, you know, try to take a bottle of water with you when you're out as well. Um, if you want to flavor water or seltzer with fruit, if you don't like just that plain taste of water, that's another option. And actually fruits and vegetables can help to hydrate us as well because they have a high water content. Um, so try to make half your plate fruits and vegetables to help you to stay hydrated. And then really anything that can melt um, once it hits your stomach can also hydrate us too. So things like gelatin, ice cream, frozen fruit bars, but just remember that most of these items contain added sugar. So you do want to kind of have those in moderation. You know, those might be things too that you might have when you aren't feeling as well to maybe help you to stay hydrated. So how about coffee or tea? So, you know, caffeine is a mild diuretic. Um, so this means that you'll end up urinating more and losing more liquid and uh, fluid in your body if you're, you know, overdoing your consumption of coffee or tea. Um, try when you can to maybe switch to decaf um, a few times a day or maybe do half caffeine, um, but try your best to, to choose unsweetened coffee or tea. Um, a little bit here and there can actually count as a hydrating beverage, um, but again, you know, you don't want to overdo your consumption of, of coffee and tea. Um, and then also just, you know, try your best not to have too much in the evening because it can also interfere with your sleeping pattern. So just be mindful of that as well. So here we're kind of at the end of the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I just wanted to kind of note, you know, with SnapEd New York, um, we talk about MyPlate and um, these are just some of the messages that go along with MyPlate. Um, making, you know, half your plate fruits and vegetables can help to hydrate us. And that's one key message that goes along with MyPlate. Um, and then, you know, trying to switch to low fat or fat free dairy is another message with MyPlate. Um, and something for us to try to do instead of whole um, dairy, whole fat dairy options, try to switch to low fat or fat free to, to reduce your intake of that saturated fat um, and even a little bit of cholesterol as well. Um, but dairy products can hydrate us too. So lastly here, you know, are you hydrated? So Wendy mentioned earlier um, that, you know, it's important to maybe aim for six to eight cups of fluid when possible. Um, 
which would be 48 to 64 ounces of fluid a day. Kind of start with that, you know. Um, so one thing you could also try to do to see if you're hydrated or, you know, if you are hydrated at all, you can um, kind of take a look at what beverage cups you're using um, and how many ounces they are um, to be able to maybe calculate out how many fluid ounces you're consuming a day um, to see if you're anywhere near that 48 to 64 ounces. Another way to see if you're hydrated, you know, check your urine color. Um, if you're consuming enough, the urine color might be more of a pale yellow color. If it's a dark yellow or amber color, you know, you may need to increase the amount you consume. And try to start hydrating earlier on. Um, that'll help to prevent you from getting up more in the middle of the night um, and, and maybe help you to better reach your goal of um, hydration there. So just as a quick recap here, um, you know, try to use that Nutrition Facts label um, to assess your intake of added sugar. Um, and then it'll be shown right there below um, in this example here. Um, when it's po when possible, you know, choose um, you know, whole grains and choose healthy carbohydrate sources that have more natural sugars instead of added sugars, because those natural sugars provide us with dietary fiber usually and vitamins and minerals as well. And then try to begin hydrating early. And just don't forget that, you know, if you aren't a big water fan, there are a lot of other ways to hydrate. Um, you know, maybe start with water and don't forget some of the tips we talked about earlier to, to help you to meet your goal for fluid a day. So thank you for listening in on my little um, PowerPoint here and we'll continue on talking about added sugar and hydration here. Yeah, so thank you so much, Molly. Those were some really great tips. And I have a, I do have a question in the chat box here. So it says, I heard that the acid in seltzer can be rough on tooth enamel. How much seltzer should I swap out for water? So I actually have a can of seltzer here. Um, we actually drink a lot. I drink a lot of seltzer uh, in this house. Um, this one happens to be black cherry. This is a store brand. Um, I usually buy it because it's cheaper and it's just as good as the name brands, but I'm going to agree, read the ingredients to you. The ingredients in this can are carbonated water and natural flavors. That's it. So I think <laughs> that the important thing to do is to read the label. In a can of seltzer that has is carbonated water and natural flavors, it, it doesn't have probably what I would call acid in it. Now, there are in some sugar-sweetened beverages, um, some colas in particular, tend to be a little bit more on the acidic side. The pH is a little lower, and so therefore it's a little bit more acidic. And that can be detrimental to tooth enamel, not just because of the sugar that's, that's in that beverage, but because of uh, the, the chemical makeup of it as well. But in general, seltzer, actual seltzer, not artificially flavored or artificially uh, sweetened seltzer is not going to be acidic because it's water. It's just water. But I have found that the carbonation in it, if you happen to have acid reflux, carbonation can be a problem. It can exacerbate your uh, acid reflux. So I guess in that way, it sort of makes me feel like it's acidic, right? Just because like, so other things that are acidic like tomato sauce or tomato juice or orange juice that absolutely definitely are acidic and that can exacerbate my um, uh, acid reflux. Sometimes I get the same thing with seltzer but it's because of the carbonation, not because of acid. So the carbonation are bubbles in your stomach. And just like, you know, if you drink something, especially if you drink too quickly and you swallow air or you drink something that's carbonated, it can make you need to burp, right? Because there's too much air trapped in your stomach. So what happens when that happens is the, you know, the opening to your stomach opens up just like it does with acid reflux. And sometimes that can bring some of the acid up as well. So that 
I don't think you have to read the label on your seltzer, but because seltzer generally is just water, you can swap it out for as much water as you want to. So we're supposed to drink between six and eight cups of water and a cup is an eight ounce cup uh, a day. So this is a 12 ounce can. So that is one and a half cups of water. So if you drank four or five of these a day, that should you know satisfy whatever your needs are for hydration. Um, and you can do that. You can just drink seltzer. I tend not to do that because it, it bothers my acid reflux. I do drink it some, but I don't drink it as often. I really prefer the flat water instead. Um, but my husband drinks a lot of this because he would rather, it, it reminds him of soda, right? Because of the carbonation, but it doesn't have the sugar in it. So calories, zero calories, no sugar in this no carbohydrates, no protein, right? Nothing, right? It's zero. So it's just water. Um, but you do have to, you know, you might have to read, there might be other things that are added to a particular seltzer that you might be buying. There might be citric acid in it, which oftentimes is used as um, a, a preservative. It's basically just vitamin C, um, but that might be, you know, contributing to the, the acidic factor of that. So um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I tend to buy the, the seltzer that's just water. I don't know, Molly, if you're familiar with any other products that, that might be a little bit different. Um, I mean, there are like flavored waters out there and, um, you know, I do agree with you to check that label in, ingredient list, um, because there might be added sugar, you know, as you said, that citric acid, um, but the best way to find out what's in that beverage is to really check out that label. Um, sometimes the front packaging on, you know, foods and drinks can be a little bit deceiving um, or confusing, but that ingredient list and that nutrition facts label is kind of clear cut and it's either, you know, well, it is what it is really, whatever's shown on there. So you right, can right. what's in there if you check yeah. it out. You know, when, when you talk about labels that can be sort of deceiving, I think of fruit juice or juice mm -hmm. drinks. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, Molly? Oh, yeah. Like even myself, when I'm out at the store, you know, if I am ever wanting to get 100% juice, you know, it might take me five minutes to kind of go through all of what's, you know, there on the shelves to figure out and find, you know, um, you know, a juice that does have just 100% juice in it. Um, so again, you know, if you look at a label, um, if you want to get cranberry juice, for example, you know, you want to make sure that you're flipping it over to the nutrition facts label um, and looking for that 100% juice um, listed on there. Um, if it says fruit juice cocktail, um, you know, it's not going to be 100% juice. Um, sometimes they might read right on the front like 100% vitamin C, and that might, you know, click in your head, oh. That might be a healthy choice, but they're just indicating, you know, it's 100% of your vitamin C needs for the day. Um, it doesn't, you know, show you if it's 100% juice or not. So, right, right, right. So a lot of the, um, you know, fruit juice drinks might only be five or 10% juice, and the rest of it is sugar and water. So um, I know that there are more options now at the grocery store. Um, there are more options that have uh, no sugar added. Um, oftentimes, like things like cranberry juice that are 100% juice that are uh, no sugar added are actually sweetened with um, other types of juices like apple juice or grape juice, which is fine. You know, that's naturally occurring sugar. Um, but you, you do want to look uh, usually on the label. And I've found that usually on the front of the label, it'll say, 100% juice. Um, if you look on the nutrition facts label and one of the first ingredients is water or sugar, then it's probably not 100% juice. So, you know, that that's another thing that you can look for as well. So, yeah, and I don't know, I don't think that we have any other questions at this time. So um, is there anything else that you can think of, Molly, that you want to talk about? Um. I feel, I don't know. I feel like we covered quite a bit today with, 
you know, talking about the beverages, especially with, you know, added sugar. Um, right. Right. I don't know if Jordan had anything she wanted to touch upon to here. Um, I think you covered everything, yeah. <laughs> everything I could think of. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, and you know, we did, we talked a little bit about coffee and tea. So coffee and tea are appropriate, um, for, uh, hydration. Um, I know years ago they used to say, oh no, like if you drink a caffeinated beverages, you know, you can't count that towards your six to eight glasses of fluid a day. Um, and I always thought that was a little bit sort of crazy because caffeine, as you mentioned, Molly, is a diuretic and a diuretic is a, a substance that actually sort of makes you pee a little bit more, but caffeine in coffee and tea is very mild, right? It's not like some people take a diuretic, a medication, a diuretic to help to move the fluid through, through their body because they have issues with either their kidneys or their heart and they have fluid build up in their bodies. Uh, so it's not like a, a medication that you're taking that's a very strong diuretic, it's pretty mild. So it is okay to count coffee and tea in your total hydration. However, if you are only drinking coffee all day long, like my brother-in-law, mm. um, you can't count all of that, right? You, that's not a good thing to do. So if you have one or two cups of coffee or tea in the morning, that's fine. And the rest of the day, if you're drinking water or you're drinking 100% juice or something like that, you know, that's okay. And you can count that. But if you're drinking coffee all day long, you're probably not going to be very hydrated because <laughs> you're going to mm -hmm. be taking in a whole lot of caffeine. Um, and certainly any kind of uh, decaffeinated drinks, uh, decaffeinated uh, tea or coffee, um, are, are appropriate for hydration as well. And you also mentioned um, like soup and um, broth. Those also can be counted as fluid and, and fluid intake. You do want to look for the low sodium options, as you mentioned, Molly. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's something that tastes a little bit different if you're not really crazy about water. Um, and one of the things that I do with my seltzer is I like to mix juice with it. So, um, especially in the morning, I will take a can of seltzer and, uh, I like the grapefruit kind, and I will put that in a glass that's 12 ounces and I'll add four ounces of, uh, hundred percent, uh, pink grapefruit juice. And that's what I drink in the morning before I have my tea. So I have a full 16 ounces of fluid before I have coffee or tea or my breakfast in the morning. Um, and that helps me to add another two cups of fluid uh, to my morning. Um, and if you're someone who doesn't really like plain water, adding four ounces of 100% juice to something like seltzer or to even plain tap water uh, can be something that um, can cut down on your sugar intake and it can increase your fluid uh, intake as well. So. so I'm gonna say thank you ladies so much for joining me today. And uh, I actually will be doing a food demo next Friday at 11.30 a.m. right here on the New York State Office for the Aging Facebook page. I'm going to be making black bean and vegetable quesadillas because on the 15th of September was the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month. So that is uh, a recipe that is inspired by Hispanic cooking. And uh, I'm going to be making that next Friday. So if you can join me, please do that. And uh, thanks so much, ladies, Jordan and Molly. I hope you have a good day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.